And this is chapter five of Peter Pan, The Long Flight. Second to the right and then straight on till morning. Wendy remembered what Peter had said, but it seemed that even birds carrying street maps and consulting them at Windy Corners couldn't have found Neverland with those directions. And so Michael and Wendy and John had no choice but to follow Peter and to trust him completely. He led them around in circles, flying past church spires and clock towers and any other tall object that struck his fancy. John and Michael didn't mind. They were having too much fun flying over the ocean, racing each other between the waves. Wendy, however, was worried. It seemed to her that they had been flying for days now. Was the island called Neverland because they would never land? It certainly seemed a possibility. She was relieved, at least, that Peter was feeding them, although his way of doing so was rather strange. He would chase birds that had foods in their mouths and steal it. The birds would then steal it back. And so it went like this for a while until someone managed to gobble the food down. Worst of all, the children were getting incredibly sleepy. Occasionally, one of them would fall asleep while flying and drop like a heavy stone toward the cruel sea below. It always turned out all right. Either the other children would shout, wake up, or Peter would swoop down at the last minute to save the falling child. But they each came awfully close to the water a few times. One of these days, Wendy thought, Peter might just let one of them fall just for the fun of it, because it would be an interesting sight to see. Don't make him mad, Wendy whispered to John. What would we do if he left us? We would go back, John said. We don't know the way. Well, then, we would go on, said John. We don't know that way either. In fact, we don't even know how to stop flying. John thought about this. When he was right, Peter had never shown them how to stop. Well, he said, worst comes to worst, we could always just keep going. The world is round, after all. Eventually, we'd get back to our bedroom window, don't you think? Peter was nowhere to be found. It wasn't uncommon for him to leave them occasionally. Easily bored and distracted, he would fly up high to the stars or down low to talk to a mermaid. He always came back, but sometimes he seemed barely to remember them, as if he had already moved on to his next adventure. I'm Wendy, Wendy reminded him once he had flown back and looked at her blankly. I know that, Peter had said, but she could tell he was lying. Eventually, the children learned how to fall asleep without falling. Peter, however, found this boring, so he would cry out and wake them up anyways, just to see them jump. At last, they reached Neverland, less due to Peter's guidance, it seemed to Wendy, than through sheer luck or perhaps because the island had been looking for them. There it is, Peter said. He gestured in the direction of the sun, that the sun was shining like a hundred golden arrows pointing to the island. Look, there's the coral reef with the tiny hut and the cave, cried John, and my lagoon with the flying flamingos. And there's the hunchback little old lady and the turtles laying their eggs and the sewing gnomes, Michael added, and my flamingo with the flying lagoons. Hello, Wolfie, Wendy called down to her pet wolf. Hello, boat. The children also saw and recognized the scary first days at school, trying not to laugh at church, the pop quizzes they hadn't studied for, the tooth fairy money, and the delicious chocolate pudding. It was all so familiar. Peter was a little annoyed with the children for knowing so much about the island. He wanted to be the one who knew everything. Shortly, however, the sun went down and the children got scared. Then Peter felt better because they needed him again. Down below, black shadows grew and strange noises could be heard. Out in the open sky, there were no nightlights or nanas to keep a child safe. The children were on their own. Huddling close to Peter, they flew so low now that their toes occasionally brushed the ocean. Something strange hung in the air. All of them could sense it. They don't want us to land, Peter said. Who are they? Wendy whispered, shuddering. 
Peter wouldn't say. Instead, he said, this island is full of pirates, and their captain, Hook, is the biggest pirate of all. The boys had been excited about pirates, but the reality of them, but at the reality of them, Michael began to cry, and John, even John, gulped. Of course, Hook's not quite as big as he used to be, Peter added, thanks to me. During our last battle, I chopped off his right hand with my sword. Now he has an iron claw instead of fingers. If you meet him, you leave him to me. Got it? Yes. Don't say yes. Say aye aye, sir. Every boy who serves under me has to say that. Aye aye, sir, John replied. It occurred to John then that Tinkerbell's light might make it easier for the pirates to see them. Tell her to go away at once, Peter, the children cried, but he refused. She gets scared and lonely too, he said. They compromised. John would carry Tink in his hat, which he would hold in his hand. This worked for a while until John got tired and Wendy took over. Don't think that this changes anything between us, the still jealous Tink clinked, if only for Peter's benefit. Suddenly, the quiet black sky was split in two by a loud boom. The noise echoed through the dark mountains. It's their cannon, John cried. The pirates have fired at us. Is anyone shot? I'm not, Peter said. But wait, where's Peter and Wendy? The wind from the cannon fire had carried Peter far out to sea, and Wendy and Tink blew high up into the black sky. Tink wasn't all bad, but fairies are so small that they only have room for one feeling at a time. When she was around Wendy, the jealousy Tink felt could barely fit. Seeing a chance to rid herself of Wendy, Tink gestured for the girl to follow her. What else could Wendy do all alone in the sky? She flew trustingly after the fairy to meet her fate. And that is chapter five of Peter Pan. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day and remember, be kind.